Hello, Possum Stramer Smith here. Whoops, you can see where he is at the creeper farm and at the squid pits, which have undergone a little bit of a transformation. This took some time. I have lined all the walls because digging this out, I was left with boxes and boxes of stone. I've gone back and fixed my pickaxes, which was nice. I've also gone back and picked up a couple of things. I'll show you those in a minute. But a lot of that leftover stone I have repurposed. <sighs> Took ages. But we now have lined squid pits here and here. And I think that looks a bit better. You can see that the mossy brick only goes down to there. That's Y45. Um, that's where all the water's going to be. So then I've just got bits of mossy brick the rest of the way down and a row of it at the bottom where the water comes in because that makes sense to me. And yeah, I've got the mossy cobble, but when 114 comes in, that will go the same colour as these, so it'll blend in quite nicely. And anyway, I don't think we're ever going to see this again. <laughs> After today, this is going to be covered. <laughs> but I'll know it's there and you'll know it's there. And I feel better for having done it. Here I am in one of the squid pits and I need to place a barrier at uh, Y43. Y43, there we are. So I'm going to put in the dirt floor all the way around. Now the reason for this is that squids will spawn from Y46 to Y62, but they need two blocks of water to do it. Now we need to put the bottom of our farm here, so this is for building the bottom of our farm on. That's Y45, that's Y46. Squid need two high blocks of water, or well, they need two blocks of water. If I have the base of the farm here with no water, this has the potential to be largely non-spawnable. If I ensure that there's a layer of water underneath it, Y46, the bottommost point at which squid can spawn, becomes entirely useful. So that's why I've got this floor going in at Y43 so that our base goes in at Y44 and our squid can happily spawn from Y46 on. There we go. Now, lots of wood. We need lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of wood. Seriously, all that may not be enough. Okay, so let's get started. I need to make um, a lot of sticks and a lot of gates. So we'll start with the gates. Oh, chuck that away for the moment. Chuck that away for the moment. 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 Oh, I hate you all. <sighs> okay, I think we'll put this back down and we'll shove a couple of things in it. We don't need the ladders at the moment. We don't need the bed at the moment. I could have done that in the first place. Okay, let's make a lot of fence gates. What we're going to do to start with is lay down our fence gates in a checkerboard pattern. So every second one on alternating rows. And that will form the base of each of our whoops, each of our squid spawning towers. Now I can get rid of all the dirt. 
Okay, now that's all done, and I'll have to go down and get my dirt. I have to make a checkerboard pattern of dirt between all my fences. And it occurs to me it probably would have been easier to do this by placing dirt gate, dirt gate, dirt gate, instead of dirt, and then gates on the top. We learn. <laughs> okay, we're ready for the next phase. Now, each of these gates represents a water column in which squid will spawn. So we need to surround each of those columns with gates so that the water from them can't flow out and mess everything up. We don't want this tank completely filled with water. We want alternating columns. The idea is the squid spawn in the columns, fall out, fall down, die. And the reason we've got gates at the bottom of the columns is one, so the water doesn't run down, and two, we'll open all those and the squid will be able to fall out of those as well. 32, I need 32 gates per layer. This is going to be expensive. All right, enough moaning about expense. Let's do the next bit. Next bit involves lots and lots and lots of ice. So I'm going to open the fence gate, place a block of ice on it, and I'm going to do that with every single one of these. So we'll end up with another checkerboard. There we have it, checkerboard of gates and ice. Now you could do this with buckets of water, so you could put a bucket of water there. You just have to be careful not to waterlog the gates. I think you can waterlog gates, I'm not sure. Um, if you can't, woohoo, if you can, just be careful. Um, but I just find ice such a convenient way to do this. Now I've got to do that all the way up to Y62. I also have to get rid of the dirt that's underneath. I'll do that. And then I'll get the rest of these done. And I'll see you then. And that's what it looks like when it's all done. I had to go out and get uh, 12 more stacks of oak to do the gates for both of them. But that's all done now. So now we get on to the next bit. Now, this is quite a small farm and I want it to be as productive as possible. So I'm going to do something that Il Mango says stops fish from spawning in it. This should be a squid only farm. That's the plan. And Il Mango tends to keep up with these things. So what I've got to do now is with my ordinary pickaxe, not the silk touch one, I break the ice going all the way down. There we go, how to break the ice at parties or at squid farms. I open this last gate simply because it's difficult to open otherwise and I place a sign on it. And then on all the other gates, I place a sign. There we go, and I come up. And I place a sign. Now the quickest way to place these, and it's a bit clacky on the keyboard, sorry, is I'm shift, space, and click, and then escape. So I'm not having to move the mouse around to um, press done. So that's all placed. What I do now, I mean, there's probably a more efficient way to do this, but I've just found this gives me a good flow. I go up and open all the gates. And 
until I am finished, I leave that top one shut. Oh, and I forgot while I'm down here, open the bottom one. Silly me. So I've got to do that for all of these. I needed 36 stacks of signs for each tank, which is quite a lot. So I had to go over to the roof forest again and get a whole lot of dark oak. So I'll be doing this for some time. And the only reason I'm leaving the um, gate shut at the top is so that I can't accidentally fall down. Oh, I'll have to do those ones. Okay, I'll see you shortly. Both done. If we have a look down. Yep, all done. All the gates are open, I think. I've got to be very careful not to fall down there. <laughs> I have got a litre, but still, it's difficult to get back out. Now, I have put a double chest down there just at the end of the hoppers. I'm going to let this run for a while and we will see how it goes. I'm off to fill in that last little bit of river. Okay, it's been running for about an hour. I've been off blocking up bits of river. There's still... Uh, whoops. If we come up here... I've still got that left to do. Um, but the rest of it's done. So it's not running at peak efficiency. But we'll see what's down there. And more to the point, we'll see if there's fish. Now, Il Mango's pretty good about this. If he says this is fish-free, I'm inclined to believe him. But as I say, the proof is in the pudding. So, as I said, it hasn't been running at peak efficiency. But ink sacks only. No fish. I'm pretty happy with that. No, no more coming in because we're too close. But I think it's fair to say that's a success. Now, I'm not going to leave these tanks open. I am going to close them up and I've got some things to do to them to make them look industrial. But that's for another time. There is one more thing I want to do for this episode, which is wholly unrelated to the squid farm. Now, that unrelated thing is I want to check the sugarcane farm. So we'll come in here. Now it has been suggested I should have the sugarcane pickup come through my paper machine, through the rollers, maybe out here. But this is the paper output. This is the output for the stuff that makes the pulp. So I've got to remember how to do this. Um, I think I put it there. No. Uh, I think I put it there. Yes. Okay, that's loading up. Let's have a look. Full as a goog. Oh my goodness, and still full. Yeah, this thing's overflowing. My sugarcane farm's working well. I'll leave that to fill up. I uh, might come out here. I'll go collect some more sand to fill in that pool over there. Oh, and this. I found a mine down there. When I was exploring the tunnels that came off the squid pits, one of them went all the way over here and into an abandoned mine. So that's going to be fun sometime. Okay, shall we see if this is done? Uh, it's supposed to push it off when it is. Why is that not working? Uh, well, that is something I shall have to sort out for another day. What is actually giving power to that? This is. Uh, right. 
Right, I'll have to review this system. I'll have to work it out. In the meantime, though, one full shulker box of sugar cane and one working squid farm, which I do actually have to enclose because, uh, let's see. Oh, no. Okay. I have come past here as I've been going to and fro and there have been ink sacks sitting on the edge here from squid that have beached themselves. But that is for another episode. I think, however, that has been very productive. So I'm going to call it there. At least this time I'll get the episode out on time. So if you like this, you know what to do. Whack the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell if you do. And I'll see you next time. Bye.